Yo, 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 Eagle J, but you can call me Dre, and today I'm here back at it again with another Drytron deck profile. That's right, Ego Draytron is back, and he's back stronger than ever. Honestly, dude, this deck has been performing way better than I ever expected it to, guys. Before I get into the deck profile and get into what I basically did over the last week, uh, just a couple of shout outs. Shout outs to all of you guys, yo. I fit hit a thousand subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, honestly, not even joking. I love doing videos. I love doing YouTube videos. Uh, I, I wish I could be more consistent with them. I really do. But over time, the more subscribers I gain, the more consistent I can be with my videos. The, that's, that's the hope at least, right? Um, yeah, but thanks a lot, guys. Uh, if you guys like the video, like it. If you guys like my channel, hey, subscribe to it. For a lot of you guys who aren't subscribed to it, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me a bunch. And make sure you guys comment as well, too, so we can talk about the deck that uh, I'm playing and just about like my builds and stuff like that. And um, yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, we can just go ahead and get in. It's the middle of like 60 card pile format. It's the middle of Sword Soul format, the middle of Flunderese format, you know what I mean? And Drytron is still able to do what it can do because it the deck is just really, really strong. So I had seen Shunping's build basically in like the way that he utilized the engine and the way that he utilized um, like the Aurora Dawn combo as well. And I kind of like did like my own thing with it in a sense. It's very similar though, still, still very similar to Shunping's build um, that he had basically topped with the case turning with it as well, too. Uh, but I really liked the build and I liked how it played. So basically, what I had done is I had went to like three separate locals over like a span of a week. And on all of those locals, like two of them I went undefeated in. So I, I won two of the locals. And then the last one I basically went X1 in. So um, in total though, in games, that's like what, like 12 out of 13 games, like one. It was, it was insane, honestly. Pretty good, pretty solid if you ask me, honestly. The deck is doing, performing way better than I expected it to. And yeah, hey, let's get into why and let's get into what basically got me the dubs. I'm gonna go by the card by card and then we're gonna go over like what the engine, how the engine works and uh, how everything plays out with, the, with each other, so. Let's get into it. Cool, so first things to start off with it is Triple Drytron Alpha. You know, we don't change these. We don't, we max out on all the good ones. Triple Drytron Alpha, obviously, you need Alpha. Switches out the Ben 10. Uh, if you guys don't know what Drytrons do at this point, like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, uh, I mean, if you don't, like, just listen to the video, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, uh, Triple Drytron Zeta, uh, obviously, you want to be able to search out your, <clears throat> your search out your ritual spells uh, for whether it be for the Dawn of the Herald or whether it be for the um, Meteonis Drytron. Uh, two Drytron Gamma uh, Elton in. Uh, I actually bumped this up. Originally, I was always a, you know, one of Gamma kind of guy. Like, I was always like a, you know, don't ever play more than one of the of the Gamma. Um, but as of lately, like, I've been wanting to see more Drytrons. And a lot of Drytron builds right now, a lot of Drytron players, they're playing three of each. Like, they're playing multiple, multiple Drytrons. And I don't want to do that. Uh, it's just important that I actually draw into one that's a combo piece. So, Drytron Gamma, that's probably, like, the better one that uh, I had decided to play. Uh, multiples of these ended up being really, really strong. Um, I'm able to go into good exceeds plays with these, especially, like, when it comes to baiting out hand traps. If you have, like, one Drytron and then a, a Gamma as well, too, you can bait out a lot of hand traps, and they don't expect you to have the Gamma afterwards as well, too especially since this is like a big hand trap format with a lot of the 60 card pile decks like gamma is just like way more important because of that as well too um one drytron delta uh this one isn't as strong as it used to be so one of is fine i think these numbers were okay so i played in total uh six seven eight nine nine drytron actual bodies actual drytron bodies um this was fine for me i i it was very rare that i like didn't draw into a way to a drytron and we'll i'll show you why later i am at 43 so we can talk about uh like the rest of the numbers as we move on okay <clears throat> Three times divine under the herald. I'm still on the fairy stuff. So uh, the way that the deck is built, like you still play the fairy stuff and you still play the fairies that search out each other, but you don't have to go into as many negates. As you'll see, I'm on a zero orange light. So I'll show you the rest of the cards as well too. I'm on zero orange light right now. These are like the only searchable fairies that I have at the moment off of anything because since of Eva's ban, orange light isn't nearly as prevalent. You can still play one orange light just in case it will come up here and there um, because like maybe you might want to add it to be able to have a negate in your hand while you're comboing or maybe like you, it's okay to like draw into it and use it just in case. But having the one of honestly, it's a brick. Like there, it's not, it doesn't get you to your combo. It doesn't create your combo. And a lot of the times, like if you have the perfection on the board or whatever Herald you're playing with, um, I think nowadays it's just perfection. Like if you're trying to uh, play this build because pre-prep is broken. If you're playing the ultimate in this build, you're kind of trolling, Loki. Um, but the the um, one of Lancia, like you can just search out the Lancia, or you can at the end of the day you can just search out another Diviner, and that's still your negate, like if the perfection's on the board, right? So, triple Diviner, uh, one of Lancia. Lancia was cracked all 
weak, bro. Oh my goodness. But being able to add this at the end of my combo or in between my combo and use it against Sword Soul players, use it against Thunder Reese players, use it against the Tengu monsters, man, dude. You just get the shotgun in instantly and everybody's prosperities are dead because a lot of people are playing prosperity. Everyone's prosperities are dead. They're not able to out the board because a lot of Tengu monsters, like they need to banish in order to out your board. Dude, this card was just insane. It just super overperformed. Like it in the main deck was a really, really good idea. And I think honestly, everybody should be maining this. I know Shunping didn't main this card himself. I don't think I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't believe he made this card. I don't think he I don't think he made this card at all. But like, I do believe you guys shouldn't main this card, like if possible, especially just being able to search it out. Um, if it's not this, it's Scythe, right? If you're playing the DPE build, I'm not playing any DPE. So I'm not playing that engine right now. I don't think it's 100% uh, necessary. I think you can just go into in multiple routes with this deck right now. It's either you're going DPE Scythe or you're going um, uh, what's called Aurora Dawn uh, Floodgate, basically. So that's it just depends on like how you're trying to play it, try to play the deck out, right? Or you can play it with the Megalith stuff, or you can play with the Megalith and the, and the DPE, which uh, some people were doing in the YCS Remote Duel. Um, you can just play it with the DPE in general and with the pre-prep stuff. Um, just all of that is really, really good, honestly. Like it's not, none of it's bad. Like none of it's bad. Like all of it's something and it all has some kind of game plan. Just what's important is that you're playing the other charts to send. And last but not least with the new main monsters, Token Collector. So this card is insane against all of the Prank Kids players I played, against all of the Brave uh, Token engines I played, against uh, all the Sword Soul players I played, right? Um, at the end of the combo, and I can show you guys at the end of the video, like the way that the... Uh, board is supposed to look you're gonna have token collector in the grave as well too so you send this off of beatrice and uh if you didn't already draw to it you send this off of beatrice it'll be in the grave during the standby phase so that way they already know like no matter what token play they make this is coming out and it's eating your tokens so it's just another floodgate that's in the body you basically stand by phase send lancia stand by phase send this boom like they can't banish and they can't summon tokens that beats half of the dexes format it's insane. And that's not even on top of the, the other floodgate that I'm playing, which you guys probably already know what it is. But yeah, this this combo is like just more than decent enough, especially with the perfection on the board. The perfection isn't even the floodgate monster to worry about anymore. It's the rest of this stuff. And it's just like a convoluted mess of a bunch of floodgates that you basically put up onto the board that they can't deal with because the Drytron engine lets you get there, right? Cool. So onto the Cyber Angels. Uh, obviously, we still play the one Ben 10, the one Iditson, and then the one Natasha. One difference between my build and Shunping build is uh, he didn't play um natasha in the main and i think he's insane bro there's so many game ones that i win because of natasha going second oh my goodness you just summon this card and you just uh take dubs like he played the natasha in the side deck because obviously it's important for um creating game you know what i mean like when you when you're in time like creating like your uh, your time win um i definitely did it to somebody as well too like i basically natasha my way into time to be able to get the dub but um not meaning it just doesn't sound correct like if you're gonna play these two like you might as well play this one as well too just to get it out of the way there's just a lot of like one of bricks that you could um draw into honestly but having the extra natasha is fine and a lot of the times i add this at the end if i need another fairy and i just use it as like a negate fodder for perfection or i just use it as um basically like a ritual to hold in my hand just in case i need a drytron to be able to be summoned next turn for the follow-up so all of this stuff's still really good uh i still think the in the cyber angels in general are just broken so and then one of draconids one of perfection this card still comes up i i wouldn't play drytrons without it honestly because there's just so many times where like there was this one time where i got scythe locked actually in one of my games that i played and um i had talent in my hand as well too and he had made baron i normal summon diviner diviner effects and he negated the diviner and i go oh okay let me activate talents talents draw two i drew into draconids and i had gamma in hand and i was like oh bro this this draconids is eating because by the way i'm under sight so i can't touch my extra deck i'm like oh this draconids is eating i summon the draconids i just mm, 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 every single monster that's on the board bro it's insane oh my god card's good card's pretty good for for scythe format right now honestly and um it just adds utility like it always has added utility for drytron so i think it's still good right now just to be able to play it and the one of perfection like like i said you're trolling for playing the ultimate in this build right now because there's no advantage that that build gives you within your deck that creates like a better engine that you might need right perfection at least gives you the pre-prep stuff and even though you you risk the brick into the non the herald this card is still broken like this card, card is still does what it needs to do and not only that like if you draw pre-prep preparation rights or pre-prep ben 10 like you just you just auto win because they need to ask the pre-prep if they don't ask the pre-prep then you auto win usually because you're comboing with a negate up on the board or with multiple negates up on the board so card's good not too much to talk about um that's all the we have for the monster count now for the spell lineup Triple Dry Nova. Uh, so Triple Dry Nova, Triple Cyber Emergency. We can talk about this too. Right now, my card list is at 43. So I think it's really important to be able to play 43 cards um in this deck i don't know why what it is about um drytron in general but whenever i played like 40 it feels very bricky 
Like every time I play flat 40, I know Xinping also played flat 40, but every time I play flat 40, it just feels wrong. So I switched it up, I, I changed it to 42, I changed it to 43. Honestly, I would be playing 44 if I could, but this just feels correct because there's so many one of bricks that you don't want to draw into. Um, you play like max out on the searchers because I know like a lot of people don't like playing multiple of these because you can brick into them. So that way you can't make drytrons, but you can't play if you don't have drytrons, right? So I think it's important to max out on these as long as you're playing more than 40. All right, so that way you can at least see a drytron and ensure that you have a drytron every single game that you play. If you don't see drytrons, you're not playing with a deck. So that's important to understand. Um, it just sucks because like uh, you can also go a route where you play like 12 drytrons or you play like multiple uh, like multiples of the names and you play only like a couple of these. You can do that as well too. Um, I just don't want to see multiples of the same drytron name is my only issue with that. Uh, I don't play Foolish Burial. I think the card's ass. There were times where I was playing Foolish Burial and I was playing it at first and like I would top deck it in a situation where it could have just been Emergency or could have just been another drytron. I'm not playing that card. That card pisses me off. So cool. Three, three. Uh, I got triple pre-prepper rights. If you guys know me, you guys know my channel. If you guys know me as a drytron player, I live and die by the pre-prep. Uh, shit goes hard. Honestly, it's a plus. It's literally a plus one. It literally says add Donald the Herald, add Herald Perfection. And if you have preparation of rights with it as well too, or you have Don, uh, Ben 10 in general with it as well too, uh, they just, they just, they're going to lose because if they don't ash this, they just lose the game. Um, this is like an FTK basically uh, together. Honestly, I only play two preparation of rights. Um, I got to be honest with you guys. The only reason I only play two is because I couldn't find my third one. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I would play three if I could, uh, but I would bump it up to 44. Honestly, this was like, okay though. Like I wasn't tripping too hard about this. Um, it uh, it felt a little better because it made it so like I didn't brick too often into multiple um, preparations. And not only that, like the only preparation targets I have obviously is the triple cyber angels and the one of perfection. Um, a lot of the times I'm searching out perfection with pre-prep and a lot of times the other fairies are getting searched out with uh, basically just Ben 10 itself. So like this could be a brick later on anyway. So honestly, th these cards are still really standard, really good, really strong. Uh, onto the next I know you guys are gonna start cringing about this stuff right now because uh, those who you know want to be free to play You know, they don't want to have to pay for the, these kind of cards, but this stuff is cracked, bro I'm sorry pot of prosperity so good just makes it so that your hands are broken There were a couple times where it like clashed with Delta it clashed with talents as well, too Because I main deck talents um, there were a couple times, but it wasn't enough for me to be to, to lose the game You know what I mean? Like it was just like I would draw into it off of talents But I also would draw into like another crack card, you know what I mean? So it wasn't that serious, right? um but part of prosperity is just cracked in general like it's just it's so good to be able to fix your hand um you just banish whatever random banish targets you have and like it's fine um and droplet obviously droplets are just broken drytron in general you activate uh forbidden droplet pitch a drytron um negate some cards and then the drytron just resolves when it, within itself or you can just chain it to nova you can chain it to cyber emergency cards broken like no, nothing else to say about forbidden droplet like it's just good going second and this deck inherently has a hard time breaking boards i'm gonna be honest with you like honestly like drytron have always had an issue breaking boards so they have to play hard cards like droplet it. they have to play hard cards like natasha like things like that and talents as well too um to be able to break board so uh double talents talents is correct uh this card was insane this card really really performed for me um there's so many hand traps in the format right now so many people playing random hand traps as well too so many people playing like little things that'll stop you like um droll i've had people main deck droll me i've had people like send by phase like lancia me i've had people uh ash ash just uh at random times or like Vagler, my Fafnir, and like this talents just gets me there, dude. It either gets me there or it gets me into your hand. And I can see your hand. I can I can ch change whatever engine you have, and I can just get rid of whatever I whatever I got. I did that to a lot of people as well too. Um, this card was really good. This card really overperformed. I think it's pretty good this format. Uh, if not not this, then Crossout Designator might be a little bit better for you. Um, but it's just because like so many sixty card pile decks. At least when you get up to the higher uh tier gameplay, like a lot of 60 card pile decks are playing random hand traps so you just want to be able to have the answer for that one fafnir one medionis drytron and then the one of dawn of the herald um this never really got banished uh drytron fafnir just for the fourth nova you want to be able to play this stuff or you can search use it to search out this and then the one of the dawn of the herald and then lastly called by the grave obviously cracked one of spell and then the goes in match bro this card is so broken man every time especially in this deck dude because there's so many different ways you can make light monsters in this deck um you just flip you just set this off of uh the award on so basically the full combo is you will go uh beatrice while you're doing your combo beatrice send goes and match to the grave and then you will go aurora Dawn or barricade word blocker go into word on make three tokens three tokens add back goes and match and just add it to your hand and then set it then at that point you have lancia during their standby phase, you're dumping token collector into the grave. You have a perfection on the field to be able to negate anything that they do. And you just flip the goes and match if they summon any like ultra uh, extra attributes. Broken. If they if they do Moye, you token collector. If they 
summon any brave kid or sorry any any brave token or any prank kid goes in match it, it's dude they, they can't combo like most most of the main decks right now they use a lot of uh different attribute monsters because there's so many different piles you flip goes in match you just win the game because the next turn you're still able to combo with all of your drytrons all of your xyz except for um the except for the ones that just aren't light i guess like 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 downer magician and like link like link monsters as well too like you can't go into too many link monsters but most of the time like you're you can just send draconids draconids summon it out because it's a light underneath and then be able to crack whatever board they make whatever weak board they make because they're under goes and match the under lancia this card is insane this card is really good in this deck just be very careful with the way that you play it uh because obviously you 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 can't go into your link monster so like you might not be able to ock them but if you summon draconids you will you know what i mean so if you find a way to get the draconids you will cards insane that's it for the main deck like i said 43 cards onto the extra starting off with the diviner of the herald targets we have one arc light one ins i'm not gonna lie i i missed double arc light a lot like there's a lot of times where i missed double arc light I, if i could fit double arc light i would um if you guys can find space to fit it i suggest fitting it um but one arc light one ins that was enough for me for the current format um two move beta fafnir i think this is necessary at the current moment like right now a lot of your combos require you to throw away the first Fafnir because you have to uh, ritual summon multiple times to be able to get your Iditin off and to be able to use this as a link material to make uh, Aurora Dawn to be able to get off your combo. And then this one is either going to be the um, is either going to be the one that you use for follow up or this could be a second one if they're stopping your play over here with the Imperm. If they're Imperming or they're Valoring this, you just make the second one and then you just start tributing off of this one as well too. So I think this is very necessary. Uh, don't cut this. Make sure it's double at, at two um one little fucko my boy little fucko um he he was a little better for me because i i listened to what shooting had said about this as well too because originally i was playing the Lyrilis, the assembled nightingale but um the reasoning behind this is because a lot of the times people aren't people are able to do stuff to the uh assembled nightingale that you can't do to fucko and a lot of the times people are summoning monsters in defense mode currently in the current format so you're able to actually just swing with fucko into anything uh that's basically in defense mode so a lot of tokens a lot of things that like basically like even even like phoenix enforcer like a lot of cards that summon themselves in defense mode and just leave them uh leave the tokens out in defense mode like you're able to crack into it with with fucko without having to detach and then you have multiple ways to zeus out it was very rare that i summoned this thing though honestly it was it was getting banished a lot off of prosperity so uh you can just think about that as well uh just think about the, the way that you're using your bird or whichever bird you want to use uh the one of downard uh the zeus for the package as well too so that way you can make sure you have zeus Zeus is always good and the one of beatrice this card is way more important than it was before uh don't use it to to send off a of drytron unless you absolutely need to use it to send off ghost and match so that that way your first turn play is a solid and um uses to send off your token collector so that way they can't deal with that as well either okay on to the link monsters one link rebo one nightmare phoenix one nightmare unicorn and one access code talker these are for the otk packages and the breaking board packages um i i you can banish this off of prosperity as well too i wasn't like going into these every single game but the games that i was winning like the games that i was very obviously winning where i was natasha taking their, their boards i was going into this i think it's important to keep like link twos in your extra deck though so don't banish phoenix um this card usually you need to link away your natasha if you're trying to make plays to be able to push for game so make sure you leave this in the extra deck just in case okay cool and then the package barricade board blocker i also have appaloosa this is the uh, going first turn um appaloosa was actually late edition i originally wasn't playing appaloosa because i wanted to play uh uh m7 the m7 because uh it's a good way to it's a good way to put back dpe that's in the grave and it's also a good way to play under goes and match like it's another light that you can go into another light exceeds that has a lot of attack and it adds back the ben 10 so m7 was a little bit uh, better for utility but there are multiple times where i needed to make appaloosa and uh i just didn't have it in my extra so i ended up adding it in last second and it did end up coming up because i was able to link it off link off into appaloosa to be able to um win like a like a more solidified game state or a more like a slow game state uh appaloosa helps those situations rather than making it first turn board it's more of just like let me go into this so that way my opponent can't play anymore like the appaloosa kind of thing that's like more what it's for and then the bear crit board blocker and the uh, aurora Dawn, make sure you're making this with whatever two monsters you you have and then leave up a machine so that way you leave up the fafnir and then you link this and then the fafnir away for the aurora Dawn. and then the aurora Dawn summons the three tokens and adds the ghost and match that you dumped with beatrice okay and that's basically how that whole uh combo and that whole board works and that's the extra deck so onto the side deck which i thought was really really crucial in me winning the games that i did the one of lancia the extra lancia um i don't think you need to play the three of this build honestly 
Because even though it's like it's such a, a good card and it's overperform, it overperforms as well as it does. You don't want to break into multiples of these, uh, especially when you're going second, because it's it's only going to stop your opponent so much. And then um, not only that, like you want to be able to search it out as well too, since it's fair that you can just search out. You can just play the second one just in case, like especially if you're playing against like a like a Flunder deck or something like that. Like you can side it in uh, when you're going second. Triple Drolin Lockbird. This card is a pretty good against every deck in the format as it is. And I played three cross out designator in the side as well, too. So that way when I'm going first, this is the only card I'm really scared of. Even Ash, I'm not scared of. Um, you can probably take out one of these or like like something to like one of like you can even maybe take out this to put in Ash if you really want to, if you want to play it with the cross out designators. But designator was really, really cracked for me, especially for Joel and Lockbird, because you auto lose to this card. So if people game, come in game two, game three, if you lost game one, you just side in uh, the cross out designators and then you side in one Joel. So that way, if they basically try to Joel you and you so that way you don't just auto lose, you can just cross out it and like not get drooled. Basically, that's just like the main reason for it. Other than that, like uh like it was it was like okay uh i ended up cross outing someone's prosperity because i play prosperity too so that was pretty cracked other than that like and i think it honestly won me the game but other than that like cross out was pretty good it's just like an insurance policy against drone lockbird because you lose so hard to that fucking card dude uh triple dark ruler no more triple evenly matched i thought this was more than fine for effect negation especially since i'm main decking the droplets as well too dark ruler no more is a very good like board breaker evenly matched was insane this card really really did really well for me all week um, every time I drew it, I won. Uh, every time I activated it, I won. Like it, it's, it's just, it was just really good. Like I think boards are, I think boards are like not as, not as strong against evenly matched as they were before, especially with evenly matched droplets or evenly matched dark, dark ruler. Like it's even, even better for that. And then one red reboot for the trap decks, and then the main card for the trap decks, royal decree. You basically just switch this out for goes and match if you're going first against the trap deck. Send royal decree, and then add this one instead, and then you set it, and then you activate it. Honestly, I. I never resolved it. I didn't play against any Eldritch players, which I, I wish I did because I, I feel like I would have resolved this and it would have been bananas for me. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, that's basically the full deck list. Like, I can just show you guys like the way that the board looks. It's like in the end, it's supposed to look like this, right? With goes and match set on the field, basically because you added that back, right? And then you'll have a, um, where's it at? You'll have a perfection somewhere boom you'll usually have a perfection somewhere and then you'll usually have what else uh beatrice somewhere as well too with like an attachment underneath her and then you dump that and then that'll put token collector as well too in the grave so that way token collector can activate um on your opponent later and then you basically do the lancia in the standby phase boom send the lancia and then you'll just have the uh fairies or whichever fairies you have for follow-up like usually it's a natasha for me like i'll have a natasha for like the one of perfection negate like it's because we don't have eva we can't load up on like load up ammo for <laughs> perfection like we did before like we can't just load up a bunch of negates but it's fine like per like natasha is like more than enough it just made it so it's not as broken like it's not like hella stupid so i'm just like using perfection to negate with you know that even there's even times where i i had to use it for i had to use lancia for the perfection negate as well too and but that's fine you know what i mean like as long as you're solidifying the game state and then your flipping goes and match when you need to just be in mind that uh when you when you flip goes and match you're gonna have to send this aurora dawn so this aurora dawn's not long for the world just send it to the grave it doesn't really matter uh you have this and then you have the natasha in your hand so that way you can gamma effect and go off that way and uh, basically play it out but yeah guys that's gonna be my deck profile for drytron for this current format um if you guys like my video like it if you guys like my channel subscribe to it i plan on doing more stuff with deck profiles in, uh in the future i i've been playing a lot of a lot more irl and a lot more uh, master duel when more master duel you know starts to get updated a little more i'll play uh i'll do more like master duel content and stuff like that uh as for now uh, i think uh, i'm not sure if i'm gonna keep playing drytron for the format i might like change it up for a little bit and then flip back to drytron i'm not sure but yeah yeah guys uh i'll see you guys later